Well, hey, everybody, and welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. Today is Wednesday, and this is your Wednesday Team Prosperity Meeting. So I'm really excited about being here with everybody today. I've got some announcements that I wanted to go over. Some you know already, and some are new. And then Mike's got a great presentation for us. I can't wait to see it. And then, as always, we're going to open up the floor for everybody to talk with each other, ask questions. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into it. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my little presentation with the announcements and um, start that from the beginning. Um, so again, August 28th, 2019, what an exciting time just in the year, in the company, on the team. There's so many things happening. Um, so I wanted to talk about some of them. Um, some big announcements. Your forward slash anywhere is now forward slash nomad, and your forward slash biz is now forward slash digital. There's been some changes made. Um, so if you have any questions about this, please let me know. Um, I also had some questions about IGO this week, so I wanted to talk a little bit about IGO, which is how we submit business electronically. IGO stands for in good order. So what it does is it actually just generates the information onto a paper application for you and allows you to e-sign it. So yes, it goes over to the carriers electronically, but you're also able to pull a paper document um, and save that and send it out. So that's really important to know. Um, also, anyone can submit a support case anytime at mywg.com. If you have a question about contracting commissions, uh, licensing appointments, E&O, um, tech support, of course you can call me or your upline SMB to help you. But also, you can just submit a support case via email, and they'll answer it via email as well. You could see little pictures down here how to do that. Hit on help, help and support. This will pop up. You select a category, select a question, go to the bottom, click on still need help, submit a support case, and that's how you do that. If you have any questions or if you need help with anything, again, just reach out to me or reach out to your upline SMD for that, and we can definitely help you. Um, we know about this already, but this is so important. I wanted to, you know, kind of go over it again, uh, that Transamerica is pleased to announce that they're going to be paying commission on access premium above the target for the first policy year for the FFIUL, which is really, really exciting. Um, so I wanted to kind of go over that. It's not available in New York, but not much is, so that's not big news. Um, also, we know that Crump is now uh, advancing 4060 on their life business, which is also very, very exciting. And Hawaii's happening. There's always lots of fun stuff happening. So Hawaii's happening right now. There's a race to 25,000. You know, leaderboards are available. If you need this email, um, let me know. I can forward it over if you wanted to look at the leaderboards. Um, there's a Red Shoe Club happening with Transamerica. Um, so there's a lot of really, really exciting stuff. And one of the biggest announcements, I think, out of everything that, you, you know, you hear from me today is that next month, September, is Life Insurance Awareness Month. So this is a great time to talk to people, get things out about life insurance awareness. So um, it's just really right up our alley there. So check that out. Um, and then when I look at this, every single month, you know, there's new – million dollar, half a million dollar, quarter million dollar, two million dollar, four million dollar earners. And that means that those people have had that much money deposited in their bank account over 12 months. Um, the WFG platform will actually track that for you and tell you when you get to 50, 100, 250, et cetera. So I brought this up because I just can't wait to see our team's names all over these monthly recognitions. So just kind of wanted to show you all that. And then, of course, um, September 2nd, which is this upcoming Monday, is Labor Day. So everybody's going to be out of the office. Um, I mean, not us because we're virtual, but I mean WFG, Transamerica, uh, Crump, all the carriers are going to be closed. So if you're calling on Saturday, you're wondering why, that's why, because of Labor Day. So that's really all I had. I just wanted to go over some of these important announcements. And I'm going to go ahead and grab Mike. Um, give me just one second to do that. Thank you so much. Oh, 
All right, everybody, school is basically back in session now, which means for a lot of people who have kids, they're getting a little bit more serious. The schedule returns to uh, more of a sense of normalcy. And so you're going to have the ability to um, talk to people who are a little bit more serious about their life at this time in the calendar um, year. So let's go through some things that hopefully will help you with your business. Now, one of the things that I really, you know, earmarked when I came into this company as a specific date was 2020. I felt like that 2020 for this company, 2021, 2022, those are key years for this company in the build out. It happens to correspond with a time period where even though we go from 2019 to 2020, it's just another year. It's one of those things where people will start to, you know, do a little bit of reflection, self-evaluation of what's been going on and use 2020 as a time for significant changes in their life. That matches with what we've got, got going on in the business cycle, creates a, a good opportunity for you guys. I remember coming into this company about 2015 or so, Lana and I had a discussion. I think we're real early. It's not going to be easy, but there's no sense in waiting. Let's just go ahead and jump on this. Um, the sweet spot of our business growth cycle is here. I don't care whether you've been here a year, two years, or you're studying for your test. You can take the same advantage over this time period that anybody else can. So make sure come into the rest of this year and the next 24, 36 months with a mindset to be aggressive, grow your business, place down your roots so that when um, you're ready to back away, you've got that cash flow asset that we're always talking about with passive income. You know, you've got to get serious. You've got to challenge yourself. Really, in order to do something special, you've got to set forth something for yourself personally uh, that also allows you to get in front of small groups and then large groups that you're ultimately going to manage um, with the same type of structure. Remember, anything that you do to better your business today has a ripple effect going down the line on future generations. If you don't get serious about your money, you're never going to have serious money. We're not looking to bring people in that want a hobby. This is not a hobby. This is a serious business, and we're looking for serious business partners. We've talked about this several times, but guys, and I'm not going to go through a lot about this, but when you create velocity in your organization, the end outcomes, whether it be partner, client, uh, neither, um, the more of those outcomes you create, the more opportunity you have to find what you're looking for. And I don't know if you guys were on the company meeting last night, but Chris Delfino talks about um, you know, a, a conversation he had with Art Williams, and he said, Art, you know, when did you know that you were done? You were financially free. Uh, how many people were in the organization? 30 people going at it very aggressively and very strong set him up. This is not one of those network marketing opportunities, MLM, where you need 3,000 people in there before you really start making any money. This is an agency-building model. It's been around for a long time, very profitable, stood the test of time. You're just creating a complete overhaul on it, which gives you a lot of advantages. One of the things that I think that we struggle with as people, whether it's a business or whatever we're trying to tackle in life, is there's no plan of action. So if you sit down in the morning with a cup of coffee and think, you know, what, what should I do today? That's a big problem for your business. You've got to come in with a plan of action and execute that plan of action. Because if you're just going to drift day in, day out, weeks pile up, months pile up, and there's probably going to be a pretty big probability that you're not going to be successful in this business. So have a plan of action, execute that plan of action, and then reflect on what happened and kind of regroup. The ABC call. So this has come up this week, um, and we need to understand what a true ABC call is. An ABC call means that you've reached out to your one contact, and you've sent over either a, you know, our business opportunity videos or some type of clientele video and you've gotten back with what's called a tier one confirm, confirm they watch those videos or a video, whatever you're sending out, and they have interest in either interviewing for a partnership at our firm, or they've got interest in talking to somebody about sitting down with a consultant and um, getting some of the free services that we offer. So why does that matter? Well, it matters because if you start to pile up ABC calls without the tier one confirm, uh, your business is going to be very busy, but you're not going to have a lot of results. And that's important because when you look at this and we say, okay, uh, Joe Smith, Joe Smith comes in and we say, Joe, if you can get up to 20 ABC calls a month, 
your business is going to be just roaring, flying, whatever you want to call it. And then Joe comes back and Joe violates our circle, doesn't do enough of those tier one confirms, piles a bunch of ABC calls up there that should have been tier one confirms. And he's looking back and say, you know what? I had 20 ABC calls. I didn't get very much out of it. Well, that starts to make Joe kind of second guess, you know, our numbers, our metrics, our system, what we're trying to do. If you have 20 legit ABC calls per month, you're going to find your business is going to start to grow and grow very rapidly. So don't cheat the system. Don't cheat the sequence of events. Make sure that you follow up and do your job as a tier one confirm so that your management, your upline can do their job with an effective ABC call. And you really get to understand at the end of the month what you really did, what results that got, and you're able to build and, once again, scale the business. So don't neglect the steps. It's just going to hurt you. And it's going to hurt your um, ability to grow and scale your business. Remember, guys, on the ABC call, we're trying to find out from two different directions. I'm going back to the business partner interview. We're trying to find out from two separate sides, our side and their side, whether this makes sense to bring them on. We are ultimately looking for someone who's looking for something. And when you're looking for something, guess what? You usually find it. You know, this is something that you have to call your own. You can take back control of your life. Uh, we want to find out, you know, what do you want? Are you willing to go after it? Are you willing to pay the upfront price to make it happen? That's really important. A lot of people want something, not willing to work for it. And we also want them to understand you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. Especially what I found in this industry, they just throw you out there. Whatever happens, happens. There's no training, no support. Can't really talk to anybody about anything. Check in once or twice a week. Let us know how things are going. Our business is the exact opposite. We'll hold your hand. We'll coach and mentor you to the point that you feel confident and you say from your side, hey, I've got this, this, or this. So that's an important part of our model is the evolution of a business partner. And then finally, the legacy, you know, that we throw that word around, but this is a legit opportunity to build something that future generations will thank you for that income. So remember, the ABC call is not just about um, getting a partner in. It's about evaluating the opportunity for both sides and making sure that if we do bring somebody in, they have value for us, they have value for you, and they have value for themselves in terms of what they're trying to do and their ability to get that done. Remember, the value identifier, we're looking at, you know, the environment, we're looking at the objections, the influences, the emotions, the success, the actions and behavior, you're trying to ultimately, um, as a marketer and then as a manager, try to read people. And once you're able to start to read people and read them very, very quickly, you stop spending time with people who don't deserve your time, and you start spending more time with people who actually deserve it. And I was talking to a partner on a coaching call, and he was saying his conversations have gone down in terms of numbers. But the quality of the conversations have gone way up. That's okay. We'll just take that. If you kind of take it as a seesaw, if you've got quality uh, and less quantity, you know, that'll balance itself out, and that'll actually be something that we can work with. Also, when you're talking to people, you know, the ABC call, or even in marketing, you've got to understand that boomers, Gen X, and millennials, they have different things they saw growing up, which shape their worldviews, uh, and that the different generations have different problems. I wasn't alive when we landed on the moon, but, you know, what an unprecedented time in human history globally um, that was. So that I can't understand. Um, if you're a millennial, you know, you grew up during 9-11. Um, you grew up watching your friends, family members, neighbors being foreclosed on. So all of these things you have to take into consideration. This shaped their views. They have different problems. And you have to learn how to effectively talk to a generation and understand where they're coming from and how you can potentially help them. Um, the millennial generation is a huge opportunity, and not over the coming next few years. It's something we're definitely going to concentrate on. I think in the next uh, couple of years, they're going to be over half the workforce. So this is a, a, a huge opportunity. They don't do things in a traditional sense. And so with our business model, the way we market uh, both on the client and the business partner side, I think we have a, a very good opportunity to go out and, and reach those people, both on the client and the business partner side. Know who you're talking to, whether it's a partner or a client. It's a lot easier for somebody to understand a message that you're trying to give to them if it actually makes sense for them. 
your business is built on people. You know, we've got the WFD platform, Transamerica platform. We've got all this digital infrastructure. We've got partnerships that go all the way to Aegon. But we're in the people business. So you can see right here that uh, Lawrence from, you know, former CEO of GE says, I'm convinced that nothing we do is more important than hiring and developing people. At the end of the day, you bet on people, not on strategies. The only way that you're going to get to an exit point in this business with the type of passive income that you want is to hire, develop people and talent. That's your main point of emphasis day in, day out, until you get to the point where it's built out. You're a talent scout. There's a lot of talent out there, and there's a lot of people that aren't very talented out there. You've got to sift through to get to the people that you're interested in talking to, and you've got to build value about, you know, what you can possibly show them, tell them, or do for them that's going to get them to their goals because their goals are ultimately going to fuel uh, you know, organizational goals, your goals, company goals, this brand that we're building. So never forget, we're in the people business. And if you understand that, you don't build a business, you build people. And then you let that people, those people build the business. You get excited about your vision. And when you have a vision that you're excited about and you can convey that vision over to other people and get them to get behind it, guess what? Next thing you know, you're starting to create that reality. So get excited about helping other people reach their goals and dreams. Everything else will take care of itself. One of the things that I learned uh, on, I'm not a participant in the Tiger program, but I've been kind of watching it. And a lot of what they did, they, you know, they borrowed from our activity sheet. So we're doing something that definitely has value. But one of the things I noticed on the Tiger program is they put a big emphasis on first-time contacts. Now, follow-ups is ultimately very, very important, but the more eyes that you can get on your assets, whether it be client videos, business partner videos, the better opportunity you have to open up enough conversations, get enough outcomes to do what you want to do. A simple hello can lead to a million things. So how many people per week are you actually making a first contact with? Because that's a huge leading indicator of the rest of your pipeline. And guys, you don't have to be pitchy. You don't have to be salesy. You just have to be a person that's willing to go out there and open up conversation in a way that allows the other side to talk to you. You ask a question, people are going to answer. And then from those answers, you're going to get the information you're looking for. And that information is going to um, uncover problems, goals, dreams, whatever it might be, that you could potentially have solutions and action points for. So remember, more eyes on your stuff, ultimately the better. And it could be so, as simple as something as saying to the other side, hey, do you still believe the American dream is alive and well? Uh, and, you know, the sticker shock of the American dream, according to this WealthWave report, is about $137,000. So do people believe that the American dream is still alive and well? And secondarily, do they feel they can accomplish it in today's society? I believe there's never been more opportunity on the table than there is right now. So, you know, I come from a school of thought where I have a growth mindset. I see opportunity all around me. That's what I want to surround myself with. If people don't believe the American dream is alive, they don't believe they can accomplish it, they have what's called a fixed mindset. And that mindset is going to keep them cornered um, into a standard of living. They might not want to accept, but they end up accepting it. So it's just all about opening conversation, asking questions, and getting responses back. Let people tell you what you need to know without driving information down their throat. What do people really want? And this is going to be steadfast throughout, you know, all of your conversations. People want lifestyle freedom. People want financial freedom. People want time freedom. Our business model can instantly offer parts of lifestyle and time freedom. You've ultimately got to work for financial freedom, but this is the kind of stuff that people are looking for. Hey, you know, do you feel there's enough time in the day to get everything done? Well, if there's not, what are you currently doing with your time? Uh, do you feel like you see your friends, family members, your neighbors as much as you would like to? This is things that are going to bring a quality of life to people, and that on the front end, coupled with the ability to build financial freedom, is a really great opportunity. Now, the difference is, are you willing to work for it? And that's the big question. How do you increase the flow of your pipeline? We always talk about, I found this pyramid when I first came in, I was trying to become a better marketer, better recruiter, better headhunter, whatever you want to call it. And this really made sense to me. You know, down here at the bottom, you've got to follow these steps because you're never going to get to the point where you're having an action step 
if you haven't uncovered a solution that makes sense for them. And that solution is going to come from a problem that has been uncovered through the information they're giving back to you. And that all starts with this bottom part right here. That's rapport and trust and credibility. If you show interest in somebody else, asking them questions, valuing their feedback or their answers, you know, that rapport, trust, and credibility can instantly go at the bottom of the pyramid, and that allows you to get to the rest of it, the information, the problem, the solution, and the potential action step. It could be this as a business opportunity or this on the client side, getting into a free consultation with a consultant. Remember, if we're out, you know, in a traditional model, which I never was, I don't come, back, I don't come from an insurance background, uh, but you've got the nice haircut, clean shave, you know, feel the confidence, the formal dress, you've got the firm handshake, correct body posture. None of that matters here. Of course, you know, you want to, you know, keep yourself, you know, um, in, in a good sense of hygiene. And, you know, working at home has its advantages and disadvantages. You want to keep yourself, you know, going. But ultimately, the only thing that the other side is going to see and hear is what you say, how you say it. Do you understand your business assets? Are you just fumbling around? Um, you know, from this point to this point with all types of tech issues. That's going to come off very poorly to the other side. The command of simple tech, three-way call, screen share. Uh, are you sending something over with broken links? This is all going to be um, a killer for a marketer. And then organization and presentation. So how do you look in the online world? That's going to get people looking at, you know, your assets, what you put out there, and it's going to be interested in talking with you. And then when they talk to you, what do you say? How do you say it? So remember, in a virtual world, it's different. you got to master these things on the right-hand side to make sure that you're getting enough eyes on what you want. When you're hiring a business partner, I've found through the last few years that this makes a, you know, a recipe for success. Do they share a vision? If they don't understand digital disruption, they don't really understand the world's changing, or they don't want the world to change. You know, they don't really share our vision. Um, the vision for this business, digitally disrupting one of the largest industries in the world, uh, people that understand that, it should lead to an excitement factor. Wow, thrill, charged up. If they have the vision, but they're not excited about it, remember, building a business from the ground floor up is not easy. Um, this is not hard work, but it's never easy to build a business from the ground floor. So the vision has to be coupled with excitement, and that has to be on the third leg. They've got to have a work ethic. Even if you have the vision, you're excited about it, but your partner's lazy, you, know, that's, you can't have two out of the three. You've got to have all three for a good partner. And I think if you guys get into the habit of locating people that understand our vision, are excited about it, and are willing to work for it, those are great partners. And those will be part of your core group that come in that help you with nationwide digital agencies and nationwide distribution of financial services. There's three types of partners that I think that over the years that have come in and I think do pretty well. We just talked about vision, excitement, and work ethic. Now we're going to talk, talk about the type of person. One type of person is somebody who's very passionate about financial literacy. They feel like it's a big problem. They want to go out. That's their calling. And we've got some of those people on our team. They make great partners. The other type of partner is the online entrepreneur, whether it's network marketer, MLM background, I don't care. They're looking to build a legit online business. This is a very legit online business. You're talking about a very old, profitable uh, industry. Uh, you're talking about the ability to go and build an online business in that industry. Um, what I find when I talk to network marketers, MLM, or other people that have been involved in those type businesses is you can put your blood, sweat, and tears into it, and then when you get up to the certain point where you're supposed to reap rewards, sometimes things happen. They change the contracts. They go private. They change the model. Or you wake up and you try to log on, the business is just completely gone. So we've got a stable opportunity where they can take their skill sets and apply it here and build a very, very nice business. And a lot of those people, like we referenced early in the conversation or the presentation today, they've got to bring on a lot of people before they make any money. Here, you get that core group going, um, and you can really take off. And the final person that I think makes a good partner is somebody existing in the industry, financial services, insurance, that have been doing it for a period of time, realize their way of doing business is a grind, they're tired of it, and they realize that 5, 10, 15, 20 years into this, they really don't have much to show for it. So those are the three types of partners, and if you get those types of partners, 
And you can find from talking with them, they share our vision, work ethic, that if you bring enough of those people in, it's just the races. Everybody, what are other people doing in the industry? Are they in an old traditional model? Well, I guarantee you over the next 36, 48 months, that model is in a lot of trouble. It's not like in the old days where it takes 25, 30, 40 years for something to disrupt. The magnitude and the speed of change in this environment is very quick and very large. So what are you doing? Are you aligned with the right company to take advantage of this revolution? If you're not, you don't care about it, fine. But if you're not and you do see where the industry needs to head and you're looking for partnerships, we've got a great way to provide additional services to your clients, create multiple streams of income for yourself, and build not a book of business, but an actual business that you can walk away from. Remember, this is what people are doing. They're checking into an office in the industry. They're driving around like an idiot to somebody's house, and they're sitting in somebody's house where the people really don't even want you there. It's uncomfortable for all people. I'm highly allergic to cats. And so if I, you know, I never did this. I was never in the insurance industry, but I can imagine myself, you know, going to somebody's house, having multiple cats, and me just almost dying over there. So this gives you a lot of opportunity to do more business on a larger scale and cut out the inefficiencies and the fat of the traditional model, which I think when we look at this seven, eight, nine, ten years from now, this whole model is toast. So what are we doing? We're taking this industry. We've got a digital model, and we are extracting market share and large amounts of money from the players who are unwilling to change. Um, if you ever look at a, a show like Shark Tank and somebody comes on, and they have this product, but it's such a small niche market that really the clientele is, is almost non-existent. It doesn't care how great your product or your service is. If, you're, if there's no market for it, nobody's going to buy it. Here, without virtual financial, the insurance industry is still a trillion-dollar industry. All we're doing is we're just changing the way business is done. And when you talk about market share on the move in an industry this large, there's a tidal wave of money that could possibly follow that. Also, the system. Never forget. Now, somebody has to be humble enough to submit to a system. Remember, if you go to McDonald's in California, you go to McDonald's in Florida, pretty much expect the exact same thing. I'm not so sure why financial services got so, you know, uh, segmented like this, but a lot of these agency building models, you can go to an office and go to an office 10 miles down the road, and they do completely different things. So how are they ever going to build distribution, a model like that? We talked about last week when the McDonald brothers introduced the speedy service system and sold it. They invited people into the restaurant to take a look. The brothers who started McDonald's and the guy who started Taco Bell showed up, bought the system. Systems work. If a partner is unwilling, they don't want to use a system, that's fine. It's not the place for them. The turnkey business system. It's plug and play. It's predictable and profitable. We always talk about franchises, how much they cost, what your net worth needs to be, what you need to have invested going into that. Uh, this requires sweat equity, grit, perseverance, um, and a desire to keep learning and educating yourself to get better at what you do. Other than that, we're never going to come back to you and say, hey, uh, we're ready to set up West Coast operations. We need a quarter million dollars. Uh, so this is the type of business that we always say the point of resistance for scalability is only finding the right people and plugging them into this business system and letting them run wild with it. When we are talking to people, if you talk to a group of people and you say, you know, who wants a better future? Who wants more money? Who wants more time? Who wants more lifestyle freedom? It's 100% response. Yes, yes, me, 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 me. The difference is when you introduce what has to be done, you know, this is the response that you get. Oh, I have to work for this? The only way that you're going to get wealthy with no investment from your side, is to win the lottery. And when you win the lottery, and most of those people, there was no process that led up to that. So when they win the lottery, many times down the road, they're completely broke, and their life is far worse than it ever was before they won the lottery. There was no process. You have to be willing to work for what you want in life. If, once again, they share our vision, and they're excited, but they're not willing to work for it, two out of those three is not good enough. Becoming a great recruiter takes persistence, and it's something that, once again, I was not a recruiter when I came in. It's something that Alana and I had to learn. 
Um, you know, know the answers to the toughest, can- toughest candidate questions. As a manager, as a marketer, you don't have to worry about that. You just pass that off. Practice makes perfect. Role playing. We're not in an office. We're not going to be practicing. Your role play is phone time. You get the rocks out of your mouth, trip over yourself, and get into a nice rhythm of communication. Phone time equals learning curve. And guys, honesty on the client side and the partner side is always uh, the best course of action, the best procedure. Because when you bring somebody in under false pretenses, it's, it's dead on arrival. It's not going to work. So let's be honest with people. When you're talking to people and they ask a question, um, I'm going to give them the answer. The answer is just the answer. It doesn't matter how I candy code it or what I say to put words around it. It is the answer. I'm looking for a select type of person, and that's why my answers are direct, brutal, and honest. 126. Somebody says, hey, I thought you guys paid 126. Well, we do. you got to earn it. Um, you know, things are built, not bought, hustle, not handed, earned, not given. I will tell you that not coming from an insurance background, I was able on, on a platform like LinkedIn to see what happens in this industry over time. And what you will find is that if the highest contract level given out instantly when you walk in somebody's front door was the end all to all the problems in the industry, well, that agency or those agencies should be doing the best. Well, what you're going to find is that our type model is doing the best. When you couple the ability to build something with the ability to have training, support, leadership on your side, especially a lot in the beginning, um, there are significant values to that type of a system and that type of procedure getting you to the point where you're self-sufficient. So 126, and then with the renewals and everything, it's 179, our best-selling product. That is what we pay, but it's earned. It's never given. We want business partners that are thinking about assets, not income. I'm thinking about building something. Yeah, my paycheck coming, uh, my next paycheck coming in, uh, you know, I, I want it to be as much as possible. Of course I do. But I'm thinking longer term that when I get this asset built and I have several digital agencies under my umbrella portfolio, whatever, it's all passive, uh, none can move on to other areas of my life, whether it be, travel, charitable contribution, spiritual, whatever it is that you guys are looking to develop and need for money, you're able to explore that. And we always talk about not many people in this country have the opportunity to do that because day in, day out, week in, week out, they're worried about how am I going to pay my credit card bill? How am I going to send my kids to college? How am I going to uh, pay my mortgage? How am I going to pay my life insurance this month? And it's that wheel like a hamster you're always on. And when you're never off that wheel, you never really see what's around you. We're building assets that are going to allow you guys to go into other parts of your life and have a much more full life than just always concentrating three-fourths of your time that you live on producing income. Also, when you're talking to people, be honest. This is not a nine-to-five deal. We're not clocking in. We're not clocking out. Um, I take appointments early in the morning. I take appointments late at night in anticipation that down the road, I'm not going to have to take any appointment. So you've got to do what you need to do in the beginning in order to get the back end reward. If somebody's looking for a nine to five, yeah, this is not it. Uh, Now we do bring people on a part-time basis and whatever hours they have outside of that nine to five, they want to devote. We welcome them. We champion the cause of part-timers. But if you're going to go at this, like myself, Alana and some other business partners in here, you know, we've jumped in into the deep end here. So you can't say, oh, I don't want to take a Sunday appointment. I don't want to take a Saturday appointment. You've got to do whatever you need to do to build your business for yourself and your business partners. Because if your business partners feel they can rely on you, you're always there to help them, um, and you're doing whatever you can to help their business, guess what? That confidence in the business and you as a manager, it spills over. And they have more activity. and They get more excited about the future. It's work. It's not hard. Don't make things harder than they need to be. Don't complicate things. Don't overthink things. Don't cheat yourself or the system. The system's there to allow us to build something great. It allows the average to become great, and it allows you to, you know, follow your own that can change your life and the life for your family, your kids, and, and, you know, possibly generations to follow that. So don't make this hard. Don't overthink it. Just do what you need to do. The activity will lead to the results. The ultimate success, you know, when you look at this, you got to start with a dream. 
What's your dream? And that's why we talk to people about what do you want out of this business? If you have no vision, no dream for your life, you're not going to really get excited about much. Step two is you've got to turn your dreams into goals. How am I going to get to my dreams? Well, those are the goals. and Those are the action steps. And then develop a strategic plan. Take action. Execute your plan. And then review your results. So if your results are successful, set higher goals. Kind of like All right, guys, we had a little bit of an audio problem there. We're back on now. So what I was saying is if you're executing your plan of action and you, res you review those results, if it's a success, just set higher goals. Push yourself to accomplish more. If you review those results and they're terrible and you consider it a fail, come back to the strategic plan and let's reevaluate. That's why we always say like in a 12-week plan, the 12-week group or the 12-week year, if you are – not hitting your 80%, you don't have to worry about anything else other than hitting those numbers. Once you hit 80% for consecutive weeks, it's not driving you to your goals. You can start thinking and reevaluating the tactics. But up until then, you've got to hit your metrics to be able to evaluate to see, is this a successful um, you know, part of what I'm doing for my business, or is this a huge failure? Success, continue, higher goals, failure, reevaluate the strategic plan. Four ways to grow your business. So when you guys look at growing your business, you know, number get the customers to buy more often. How much insurance and how much financial set up as the life cycle changes, you know, they might have some more needs. Have a kid, buy a house, inherit some money, and come back and revisit. But ultimately, this is not really – number two is not really something that we can count on. Number three, increase the value average of your sale. Now, this is something that the consultants can really work on because as you become more knowledgeable in the products, as you become more knowledgeable in terms of how to be a great consultant, how to talk to people, how to get them to make buying decisions based on their goals and dreams, time horizons, the resources, and how you put that roadmap together, that's something that we can work on. Improve your systems and processes. That's something that we always try to work on continuously as a company, as a team, as individuals. But by far, number one is where you want. Increase the number of your ideal customers, and we get there by having more eyes on your assets. So the way that you're going to grow your business is just by getting more people to look at your business. That's the easiest way, not hard to understand. Just go out and do what you need to do, and then the rest of the assembly line will take care of it for you. Know your numbers. And, guys, this is so important because if you're out there just blindly – doing things that you're not really sure what it's getting or what it's not getting, it's going to be hard to grow your business, and it's going to be hard to explain to your partners how to grow a business. If you've got concrete plans of action with metrics that you can show people, you know, if I'm coming into your organization, you show me that, A, I'm going to be impressed, and B, I'm going to get behind it. So always, always, always know your numbers. And one of the most important things that you can look at as a metric, cost of acquisition of a partner, of a client. It's the only metric that you should care about regardless of the cost of the lead or the marketing, whatever you're doing. Some people look at, for example, if somebody's going to buy a lead, 
Uh, well, the lead might cost a dollar, or the lead might cost a hundred dollars. Lead. Well, it doesn't really matter the cost of something. It matters the return on investment. Your cost, the value of that person long term to you. So always look at the value of something and the return on your investment over the cost. If you're doing paid marketing, you need to understand, you know, you can't just set up Facebook marketing and start throwing money at it and expect leads to pour in. You've got to test things with very small budgets and you've got to learn. It's a learning process. Most people on a platform like Facebook marketing are going to lose money and they're going to quit because they never took the time to develop a real Facebook marketing strategy or campaign that will work. Expect when you do something new, there's going to be an investment on the front end that probably doesn't return much. It's the cost of learning how to do something. But overall, if you learn how to do something, you put money, it's returning a nice um, percentage on that investment, you can repeat that. Very easy to grow and scale the business. Free trials. So if you are coming in, let's say you don't have money to invest in marketing. Let's say this is just a ground floor for you in terms of the opportunity, but it's also in terms of what you can do monetarily for your business. We don't require people to come in marketing budgets, but if you're coming in with no money, as you start to make money, we talk about doing two things. Pay yourself first for your time. Uh, one of the ways that you kind of skirt that in the beginning is free trial. If somebody gives you a 30-day free trial or a credit to use, by all means, use it. If you're going to sign up for something, don't sign up for it. Use it one day and then two weeks come back and revisit it. If you're going to use a free trial, hit it as hard as you possibly can for a 30-day process or whatever that is, the coupon, whatever that is that they're offering you, you know, drive the maximum amount of energy and effort you can to that. One of the businesses I started years ago um, wasn't started with much money. My partner, who was handling all the technology side, my um, place in the business was the relationships, the money, the execution. Um, you know, we were using Google AdWords, and I was going on eBay and buying $50 AdWord coupons for 3 $5 and deploying that. And we had to set up accounts, and it was not fun. It was not easy, and eventually Google caught on. But ultimately, you've got to be – in a position mentally to go at this and do whatever you can. So if money is, a, is an obstacle for you coming in, you've got to be, um, you know, able to go out free trials, able to kind of, you know, work your way around the system and get some momentum and get some uh, velocity in your marketing to allow you to make money to reinvest in your business. Another thing, you know, when we're talking about numbers, you know, accountability is very, very important. No one wants to be accountable but it's very, very important. So when I talk to people about account accountability, it's normally one of two types of reactions. Either A, it's an alien concept, never heard of it, don't understand why we would do it, or, you know, you're really too cool for accountability. So remember, the only way that you know what's happening, what's working, what's not working, how to reflect, regroup, or continue and set higher goals is to be accountable. Be accountable to yourself, first of all, and then be accountable to your partner secondarily. Also, when we talk about knowing the numbers, I mean, this needs to be updated, and I will update this with uh, new numbers, but look at what's happening on this platform. You talk about 08 to 2013, 2013 to 2017, uh, you know, more than four and a half times more people, and this is not total. These are new millionaires on the platform during that particular period of time. Uh, 10 versus 46. One and a half million dollar earners, four versus 25. Two million dollar earners, two versus 16. There were no $3 million earners during this particular period of time. They, uh, this platform, during that particular period of time, 2013 to 2017, minted nine new people crossing the $3 million mark. Um, our digital model is going to, you know, even, you know, the, company, the most of those, six- and seven-figure earners of any company on the earth. We do that by bringing disruption to this side. These are, these are average people. These are average couples, average individuals that work extremely hard to get where they are. So this is not something where, you know, you need a Harvard education and you need Wall Street experience. This is something where if you share the three things that we look for, vision, 
excitement, and have a work ethic, you can come in here, you can make big things happen. We always talk about the quadrants of income. What I wanted to very briefly show you guys today is a revisit of something we went through a couple months ago, which is the bonus income. At SVP, and this is why we're always pushing you guys to SVP, because there's a lot of things that open at that time for you, including the bonus income. So when you look at bonus income, well, how does it look? Well, if you're running one base shop, and your base shop has, let's say, three base shop recruits and a total of 25,000 net points, um, you know, and this is not going to be down to the penny, and this is not scientific. It varies based on who qualifies and what the pool is, but, you know, about an average of a $1,500 monthly bonus. Now, if you could double that up to six and 50, approximately a $3,000 bonus. So what does that mean for us? Well, that means that if we are hitting – six base shop recruits and 50,000 total production in our base office, one office every single month, that also qualifies us for a level one of the quarterly bonuses, which are eight and $16,000. So I'm just going with the lower level, level one. We've qualified for that by doing this month in, month out. What does that do as a total? Well, you're looking at $3,000 in monthly bonuses every year for one full year, $36,000 in monthly bonus pool money. That also qualifies you for the $8,000 quarterly bonus every quarter in a year. Four quarters, $32,000. So you're talking about just in bonus money, one SVP running one base shop, $68,000. Some people would love that as a salary or as a yearly income. How do we get there? That bonus structure shows minimal partner growth and an average of $138 a day in total base shop premium written. Average term policy in this country is a quarter million. Average price they pay for that is right around $70 a month. So you're looking at two hours. These are not pie in the sky numbers. They're very, very achievable. But at the same time, like we just referenced, this bonus would eclipse the total average median household income in the U.S. for 2018 which was around 62000 So you want to make more than the average median household income just in bonuses per year? Yeah, we can get you there. Also, when you're looking at your business and you know your numbers and you're evaluating the marketplace, financial services is the place to be. Why is that? Because look at this. You know, getting rich for us is not a fantasy, and it's not a fantasy for other people if they're willing to work for it. Most people never, ever get rich because they never considered it as a possibility. For our clientele, look what's happening. 76 people, 76% of the people live paycheck to paycheck. So the next time that you're out in a crowd, whether it be big or small, look around. Three out of every four of those people are living paycheck to paycheck. Do they need your help, your guidance, your education? Yeah, they most definitely do. And then look around. Half those people in that group have no money for retirement. Almost half those people could not even afford a $400 emergency. So is financial literacy, is financial education, is financial products with strategies, vehicles, and concepts that can help cure this important? You better believe it. And when you look at that and you look at the numbers of these people uh, that are struggling, we have an unlimited market here. People don't know how to make money. Fewer people know how to keep it, and almost no one knows how to multiply it. That's what we do. We teach people how money works. And most people are concerned about money matters, but few truly understand how money works. Once again, do they want to know how money works? We're going to teach them. And we do that for free, no cost, no obligation. But by getting in front of people with that type of value, we lead them to buying decisions through our F&As, through our products, through our strategies, concepts. If you do not learn how money works, you're going to spend the rest of your lives working for money. So that's from a business partner perspective or a client perspective. You've got to understand how money works. You're going to Spend the rest of your life paying dearly for that. We do that for a number of reasons. The very basic reason is to learn how to use the CRM. There's money there. Um, if people have traditional term policies that could possibly fall into the upgrade window, all right, I guess, I guess we're having some bad audio problems today. So the tier six, guys, I'm going to try to power through this, is um, very, very important. It helps make the partner potential money. It helps spread financial literacy. It helps get more products on the platform. 
But also, it helps, like I said, at a base level, if you get absolutely nothing out of that, to learn how to use the CRM. If you've got 10 partners coming in per month, and all of them do a tier six, that's 200 people. What is the probability that in there, there are term upgrades, there are new insurance needs, there's financial planning needs. So understand, this is not a punishment for your partner, and this is not our model where we're just going to continually go after the warm market, but we need to start there. It's very, very, very important. So the prerequisite to the Tier 6 training and other additional individual training is 20 names in the CRM. Make sure your partners have those when they come into the Tier 6. It's the manager's responsibility to work with a new partner on the Tier 6 and then follow up and help them. One of the ways that you can make immediate money here is becoming a living benefits expert. It's not a hard policy or product to understand. It's not a hard policy or product to go out and talk to people about. It's needed whether somebody is single or whether they're married kids home, it's on both sides of the fence. It's a very, very, very important product um, that not too many people know about. So your job, once again, as a marketer, is to get out there and get in front of people and educate them about what's happening. Become a living benefits expert. And then once we get out of that initial little warm market, and I'm not saying forever, I'm going to my brother's birthday party this weekend. Uh, he has a traditional term. I've been in this company years. We still haven't upgraded it. We're going to do that. So when you understand the warm market, the walk of life is continuous, then we start to branch out into social media platforms like LinkedIn. Why? Because there's all, half a billion users, 25% of adult Internet users in the U.S. are on the platform, 40% check LinkedIn daily, 76% of executives, most affluent demographic by far, and millions of businesses. This is the modern-day chamber of commerce uh, on the nationwide scale. Also, look at your business with a sense of urgency. Through the rest of the year, through the next few years, it's very, very important that you grow this business the best that you can, but also kind of get back into a 90-day kind of cycle. Success secret, compress the time frames, collapse the activity, and take action at the speed of instruction. Unless you're aggressive in this marketplace and really in anything that you do in life, all the – and then follow up. We talk about this. Not following up if you're a consultant with a client that wants to think about something or if you're not following up with your business partners once they come in, you're not following up as a marketer with your lead, you're leaving business growth on the table, and you're going to get surpassed by people who are willing to follow up. Have a follow-up system. You know, prospect communication schedule, voicemails, emails, texts, social media messages. Resolve leads. Don't let leads go dumped for non-communication. The more leads you resolve, the more outcomes come, and the better opportunity you have to get what you're looking for. Add value to your approach. So remember, you're following up. You're sending those messages. Um, you know, if you look at what everybody else does, try to do something different. Stand out from the crowd. Alana mentioned IGO earlier, and I just want to mention that this is a, a huge thing that if you get in the habit of doing, it will help your business. If you get in the habit of not doing, it's definitely going to hurt your business. You don't want part of your day to be chasing people for signatures when you just spent 30 or 45 minutes on the phone with them yesterday or two days ago. Spend the extra five minutes. Sometimes people don't know how to access this. They need help. And when you hang up that phone or disconnect from the virtual environment, um, it's not going to come, and now you're chasing people for signatures. An extra five minutes um, is definitely worth it. The team tracker. Like we said, you can't just follow up with leads. You can't follow up just with clients. You've got to follow up with your business partners. If you don't know where your business partners are or what you need to do, help them progress, get through the circle or what they need as far as assistance, help, training, support. Uh, they're going to drift. We're not showing up to an office. When you drift in a virtual world, you're going to drift too far, and you're going to quit. This is what it looks like. I have a copy of this. It's very basic information, but I can pull this up uh, at any time uh, with you, and I can review this with you and say, okay, this person, person needs this, rather than just having an oral conversation and say, I don't know. I think I talked to him two weeks ago. So be on top of your team. Always, always, always spend some time of your day, your week, your month investing into yourself. Poor investor money, always be learning how much time did you carve out this past week to learn. Uh, knowledge is, you know, something that 
is going to pay big benefits and dividends for you. And then when you look at this, you know, just some things to keep in mind. You know, you want to be a goal achiever. Just setting goals is not enough. You've got to achieve those goals. The unconscious mind is 95% of the process. Get engaged, make things happen, visualize what you want, feel it, and have it with creative imagination. Your power is then going to attract others. Remember, if you can sell your vision to others, they're going to get behind it, and they'll help you create it. See it to believe it. No, believe it to see it first. Remember, and then 55,000 thoughts per day, 95% of those are repeats from yesterday, creates a rut, you lose your vision. Habits rule the unreflecting life. Whether it's good routines or bad routines, your brain wants to continue. Being truthful will um, end life as you know it and forge onto a new path. A lot of people just, they're constantly lying to themselves, lying to people around them. Be truthful about what's going on. If you're not doing what you need to do, look at yourself in the mirror, get yourself together, and regroup. You're never going to be more happy and satisfied when you're going after something. Remember, the process makes the person. The end result is great, but the process is going to create who you are. And don't shit on yourself. If you look at your past and you say, you know, I should have done this, I should have done that, or that was a big opportunity, I should have gone with that, don't continue to get in that same process. When you see opportunity, pounce on it. And what could you do if fear was removed? A lot of us coming in here, we're afraid. We're afraid we're going to say the wrong thing, put out the wrong thing, offend somebody, be aggressive. The brain's going to respond to whatever it is that you're putting in front of it. If it's just fearless um, activity, aggression in the marketplace, um, you're going to feed off of that. And then helping you guys are more than glad to help you with whatever you need, as much training, support, individualized coaching sessions, but – if the problem is that you're having zero activity, well, that's where we sh- until that activity actually comes in. And guys, remember, if you have the worst day, the worst week, the worst month, it's always going to, you know, it's a roller coaster ride. You know, you'll be at the highs and the lows. Don't get too high. Don't get too low. But remember, overall, winning takes care of everything. So I know we had a little bit of audio problem. We'll make sure we correct that for next week. Uh, If you guys do have any questions, we're going to open the floor right now. I'll send it back.